Hello and welcome to the Shaley Hope Center for Healing, where we are manifesting a faith-inspired, collaborative community of hope, healing, and prosperity. Today we are talking from this perspective of the healer's nook. This is a video that is for healers. If you are an energy healer or a coach that's looking for ideas or perspectives that might serve you in serving somebody else, then this video is right for you. We're going to be talking about how to forgive someone. And this is specifically facilitating a manifestation of releasing emotional pain. This can be really tricky for people. And there's a lot of misconceptions and different perspectives and perceptions about um, what it means and what's allowed and all of this stuff. So I want to go over some of that in this video. And then I have a resource for you at the end. But before we go into that, I want to introduce myself. My name is Bronwyn Olschlager. I'm an intuitive healer. I'm a business mentor, and I'm the founder of the Shaoli Hope Center for Healing. My genius zone is organizing and systematizing collaborations. I can't stop myself. It brings me so much joy. I love it so much. So, and if you are a healer, or if you are looking to improve your mental, emotional, energetic, and physical health in a holistic way, then you are in the right place and we invite you to subscribe to this channel, ring the bell so you get the notifications. We post a couple of times a day um, and you can like this video and what that does, it's a favor to us and it's also a favor to the people that might benefit from this video if they knew about it. So it tells the algorithm to put it out in suggested post land so that other people can see it. Also. If you find at the end of this video that you really hope that somebody else could see it, don't be afraid to share. Go ahead and follow those soul nudges and help somebody who you think would benefit from knowing the things that I'm about to share here today from my perspective, okay? Okay, so how to forgive someone. Let's talk about creating that manifestation of releasing emotional pain. First, you're not a robot. <laughs> you're not going to just get over it. And neither is the person that you're trying to help forgive someone or forgive themselves even, right? So take the time to take the steps. And I'm going to be as brief of, as I can here, but understand all of this merits some dissection. And I'm going to do more videos about these things to zone in on some of the things that merit more information and more dissection. Okay. So this is like an overview. Consider it part one. Um, and we're going to talk about this from this perspective. This is the law of forgiveness. It is a neutralizing power. It fulfills the law of karma. So it was provided by the atonement of Jesus Christ. This is where I'm coming from. If you don't like that, then you might not like what comes from me and you might not like what else is on this channel. Um, but if you like Jesus, this is the place for you. We're going to talk from this perspective. This law of forgiveness provided by that atonement, uh, neutralizes the law of karma. That's the boomerang law. It's the law of natural consequences, the law of the harvest. You know, this happens and th then this is the result. This is the domino effect. The law of forgiveness neutralizes natural consequences, especially the ones that happen inside your body. So I was just talking to somebody about this yesterday. This is really, really important. First, before I go into that, the law of forgiveness is the reason why the release of emotional pain is even possible. But every physical thing that manifests in your body is, it happens because there's an environment in your body that is created. And when you have like a, an acidic thought, it creates an acidic feeling. You can feel it. You know, a regret, that doesn't feel good. It feels like a punch in the stomach. You can feel the acidic reaction inside of your body when you have an acidic thought or a toxic thought. I don't like the word toxic as much for this kind of thing because people call each other names, right? But if you're having an acidic thought that creates an acidic chemical reaction in your body, then you're creating an environment for something to thrive in there that is not something you want, right? Like a virus or um, cancer or, you know, things like that. Pretty much anything. You could have your knee hurt. You could keep bumping your knee because you're creating these micro movements because of your thoughts. And so this all connects together to even turn into something physical. So keep that in mind. If you're dealing with a physical thing, like a gut health problem or something, handle it physically and make sure you turn to a forgiveness technique that works for you so that you can shift what's going on inside. Because if you don't, then that's going to be kept 
you know, you're going to keep recreating the same thing over and over again in your body. And it does domino out into your life as well in your relationships and everything. So forgiveness is a manifestation. It does create a physical thing. Okay. But before we get into that, we have to start at the beginning, which starts with validation. It, these three things need to be validated. The emotional pain itself, like it's okay to actually feel. You're allowed to feel hurt by this thing. It's okay. You're allowed, right? Yep, I understand. The experiences that happened. Yep, if that thing happened to me, that was a big deal. And I can see how you would feel pain. And yep, that happened. And I can see how you would see it that way. And it would create your pain. I can see. So this is all important validation. If you're facilitating for somebody else or yourself, this is an important part of the process. And uh, there's, you know, a lot of misconceptions about the word validation. So I'm going to go into this. Okay. Validation does not mean the same thing as enabling. Enabling is something that people with a mental illness codependence do to keep somebody, you know, addicted to drugs, even if they don't like it, or to stay in a situation and continue to invite themselves to be harmed by somebody. It's, it's not the same thing as validation. You're not enabling when you're validating. It's the first step in a process that creates a space of trust and safety so that somebody can have a shift inside. So please remember that. Nobody is just going to get out, get over it. You're not just telling somebody to turn their back on their feelings, stuff them down and keep them because you don't want to enable them to keep feeling that way. It doesn't work that way. Do you see the paradox there? So validation is to convey the empathy that you feel when you put yourself in someone else's shoes. You can't fake validation either. You can't fake empathy. People will know if you are pretending. So feel with them. Validation is not the same as saying that you are right to feel this way. It is simple. It says that you can put yourself in their shoes and feel with them. And like I said, they'll know if you're faking. Don't fake. To forgive is to release emotional pain, otherwise known as resentment. Forgiveness does not mean that you trust someone now. Just because you forgive them, doesn't mean that you trust them. It does not mean that, that you let someone continue to hurt you. It does not mean that you are saying it was okay for them to do something cruel. It means that you release your pain and that is all. Resentment, it, it's emotional pain that you hold on to for a period of time. This could look like regret. It could look like anger. It could look like sadness over and over. It could look like, why would they do that to me? I mean, it's like, it's this, it's kind of an, a survival mode kind of emotion, if you want to put it that way. What we're doing is we're going in the direction of meekness, and this is a process. So if you go to shame over and over, if you're not doing it right, then you keep yourself from getting there because that's just more emotional pain because shame hurts, right? So the, the goal is meekness, which is not the same as humility. Humility is required to go into a process that you could learn meekness. It's, it's a learning thing. Humility means openness to learning. <laughs> um, meekness means to endure injury without resentment. And it ends up looking like I, I ended up starting to call it instant forgiveness. Because over time, I have these moments um, now <laughs> after practice, and I still have my moments when I need to practice forgiveness because, you know, I'm human and it's okay to be human. So I give you permission to be human too. Okay. You need my permission anyway, whatever. <laughs> but meekness is to endure injury without resentment. And what happens over time is that you get these moments where you don't even get offended. Things that used to be painful to you or that would have offended you in the past that would have created resentment in you. Suddenly you're looking at this and you're going through this process so fast that it doesn't even create resentment in you in the first place because you just don't get offended. That's what it looks like to endure injury without resentment. Okay. It's not this big supposed to, it's actually a skill that you learn. Okay. Perception. <laughs> the reason I'm going over these definitions is because of perception. If I weren't, to, if I didn't explain this to you, 
then when we start doing work together in these videos or, or however, then you don't understand where I'm coming from. So we have this uh, clash in perceptions and it makes it even harder for you to do the things that I'm helping you do. If you're having that clash in perception with the person that you're trying to help facilitate um, a healing process like forgiveness, then they may end up feeling like they have to protect themselves because you're going, you know, you're clashing, right? So help them see the perception. Do what you can to help them see the perception of words and experiences the way you need them to in order to be able to help them. That's why I'm doing this. Here are my definitions of these things so that we're on the same page, okay? And you can do that with them and have them ask you questions and do all the things. In fact, if you have a question about any of these things, make sure you leave a comment so that I can answer you. Okay, so it's the meaning that you give to your experiences or words that you have learned, etc. Perceptions must be shifted for emotional healing to take place because it all starts here in the head, in the mind. Okay, so simple shifting process. Understand, again, this does merit dissection, but I am going to go through this pretty fast, and then I'm going to make more videos to dissect. Okay, so watch for more. Ask, what meaning am I giving this experience? An example might be, this person said or did this, and that means they don't love me, so I must not be lovable. And some people really get stuck on this part, on they don't love me, and they don't, they, they want to think that they believe they love themselves, but they, but after they talk it out, they realize, oh my heck, I totally took on the meaning that I'm not lovable, even though I didn't realize it. That's what happened to me. Boy, I was 38 years old when I finally woke up and saw what I was doing to myself. I got responsible and shifted. It is a hard one though. Oh my gosh, you have to be so ready and you have to feel so safe to be able to get there. So recognize that when you're helping somebody. Okay, ask what has feeling this way cost me? And that could be happiness, probably money because I haven't felt confident. Um, I haven't, I have a sense of you know, have had a sense of purpose because this has kept me spinning and I spend all my energy being, whenever I'm reminded of this thing, it punches me in the stomach. I have this whole acidic reaction. I go into survival mode and I just can't get anything done. Okay. Ask what would feel better to do or to believe or perceive? What do you want? What would feel better? And give them this open door to go explore that. What do I want to believe or perceive? So an example would be, I'd rather believe blank about this person and blank about myself, and I'd rather see the situation through God's eyes and feel safe. Now, I feel like I need to just interject here. Um, I'm just, I'm going to put this out here. So I had, when I was two years old, some, a couple of really, really bad people, bad men did some things that they not, they should not have done to my little two-year-old body. Okay. And they, pounded into me this idea that I wasn't allowed to say no without getting punished. And because that happened to me, I, uh, I can say this to you with like, that was not okay. It's like, it was not okay. And I don't even want to think well of those men. Okay. But what I do want to believe is that justice happened to them or that God will do justice to them. And I don't have to worry about revenge or anything like that. Right. I don't have to worry. When I first started working on this one, I wanted somebody to go get them and take them out for me because they did that to me. And I just that was not OK. Right. But because I know this process, I can say I'd rather believe that justice has been done and they've got their come up and somehow. So that's what I'd rather believe about them. OK. And that gives me a, a better feeling and I can let it go a little easier. And then I'd rather believe about myself that I'm totally safe, that I'm awesome. I can say no without getting punished. I do say no. I'm allowed to be sassy. I don't have to conform. You know, I'd rather believe these things about myself. Okay. And I'd rather see myself through God, God's eyes and the situation through God's eyes and feel safe. I'm safe. Okay. So that's an example. Okay. And what am I ready? What, excuse me. Am I ready and willing to start this shift in my perception? This is a really important question. I am going to go into this into a lot more detail, um, but let's say the answer is no, I'm not ready, right? If the answer is no, just keep talking to yourself 
help them talk to themselves. You can keep them talking to you, but it's even more powerful if you can get them to sit down and journal about it and just talk to themselves and listen to themselves and be there for themselves. So it's just between them and God. There's something about that that is just magic. And I do give you, I'm going to give you an opportunity to know more about my process there so that you can use this, but journal the feelings, let yourself be with it, help them let themselves be with it. And there is no shame in needing to go through the process. There's no shame in it taking a little bit of time. It depends on how big it is, what your perception is about it. And you know, how it just really depends on, you know, how, how scary it feels to let go of this thing that feels like it defines you. What would you be without it? You know, you might have to go through a pretty significant process and it might take some time and that's okay. So there's a link in the description below this video that is all about, it's a 21 day redefine and forgive process that I created. It's a video experience. You can go and get the course. It's free and it takes you through all 21 days. There's a email drip to help you remember to come back to it. You can go at your own pace. It's totally fine. The emails are just because it was requested to help people know how to log in over and over again throughout the 21 days. And you can go back and get it and use those videos as many times as you need to, to create a healing inside yourself. You can teach this to your clients. It is so powerful. In fact, you can just share that with them if you want. It's free. Okay. All right. So the simple shifting process, let's come back to what if the answer is yes. If the answer is yes, then it's time to start choosing your desired perception and just land on something that your mind can believe right now. And I have like a I have an example that I like to share in helping you, helping your client, helping my clients understand what it is that it takes to shift from this is hard for me to this is easy for me. Okay, and I'm going to use money because everybody gets money. It's hard for me. Money's hard for me to get. Nobody wants to pay me. It's hard, right? And as a healer, you could probably identify with this because we want to give it all away. We're so loving and we want to just help everybody in the way, it, it, it's in the best way that we can. And once we get going and God's telling us to monetize, it can feel a little bit daunting to ask people to pay us. And that feels hard, right? So it feels hard to get money. It felt hard to get money for me at first. So what I did was I said, okay, brain, I know you don't want to believe that money's easy, but I want to believe that money falls at my feet because I want to provide for my family. And at the time that I was going through this, my husband was out of work and he had been for a really, really long time, many years. And I was feeling desperate to get something to happen. So I needed to have this shift. And I said, okay, I want to believe money is so easy that it just falls at my feet. It just arrives and it's mine to use how I want to for my family. And so I chose to believe that I could find money on the ground if, at any parking lot I went to. Just money falls at my feet. I just needed some evidence for my mind to get its my head around, right? So that I could believe that that could be true on some level. And that was my baby step in. Okay. Um, I invite you to help your person that you're helping to baby step their way in. Like, is it okay to believe? That's the first one. Is it okay to believe something different? Are you okay with believing something different? And they say yes. And they're just like, okay, let's start choosing what feels great. Let's take a baby step and let's practice that baby step. And then we can grow that evidence and then create something bigger. And then grab that evidence and believe the next thing all the way until it, I believe it's easy for me. Okay. All the way until it is. Okay. So again, forgiveness is manifesting healing from the root. And I invite you to help your clients see it this way so that they can recognize that they have full power and that that being responsible for this means that they have all the choice in it and that they can choose all the difference that they want to experience okay, in their body, in their relationships, in their money, in everything. It all connects. All right. Again, I'm going to invite you to subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video if you haven't already. Again, that really helps us to get this out there in front of more people so that they can benefit from it. And again, if you know somebody that needs it, go ahead and share it. And I hope that it really, really helps. And 
thank you for watching. Um, here are a couple of my suggested videos for you to continue to watch on our channel. And if you have a comment, make sure you leave it. It helps us create more value for you. We'll see you later.